Does it anger you at all that, including the media, including fans, including actually boxers are saying, we can't wait for Deontay Wilder and Anthony Joshua fight to happen? No, it doesn't. Uh, that's, I mean, that's a fight that uh, if, if the fighters or fans want to see, then they don't want to see it. But it doesn't really affect me. I, I got one target on my mind, and that's Anthony Joshua. That's what I want to focus on. I'm curious, what do you make of uh, the skills that Wilder has? I think Wilder's you know, pretty much one of the, you know, of course he's one of the best because he's a WBC champion, but he's um, you know, rangy, powerful, you know, we, he's actually you know, at the top level because he's, uh, he's a good fighter. So. How does he compare to the skills you have? And this question both of Well, for me, you know, if I, you know, I, I see myself as the best in the world, you know, he said he sees himself the best in the world, and so is Joshua. So, um, skill-wise, I always think that I have better skills and probably the same as him. I think Joe's the, the most skillful heavyweight champion in the world. I think Joe can do more. When he's, when he's on his best game, it is very, very pretty to watch. And my challenge to him, this whole camp, is to be, not to, not to try to be something that he's not, but to go out there and to show Joshua, the boxing world and the sporting world what I see in the gym. Because the stuff that he does in the gym, no other heavyweight in the world can do. I just need him to put it all together on one night, on March 31, and we'll leave that ring with all the belts. I need Joe's best, best performance. But not, not, I'm not asking for something that, that he hasn't got. I'm not saying be better than you are. Just show me on the night what you show me in the gym. What do you think of just, they've already sold over 70,000 tickets, it's going to be the biggest um, fight, fan attendance-wise as well. Do you think that it puts pressure on him too, obviously at home? They're rooting for him, but he has to put on a show. Do you think that might actually be to your advantage? I think, you know, it's, um, everyone has pressure, but it's, it's how you deal with it. You know, I, I don't feel I have pressure because, like I said, my confidence comes from training. But um, it's amazing, you know, amazing to be involved in this event, amazing to be fighting in front of all these people. I'm looking forward to it. You know, it's going to be something special and something unique. There is huge pressure on Joshua. There's huge public expectation. You know, they think they're going to walk through Joseph Parker. You know, they've got him like an eight-to-one favorite. You know, they think this is an easy fight, a warm-up fight for him to go and fight Deontay Wilder. You know, I know when you ask somebody asked the question before, do you think Joshua's people are looking past <coughs> Joe? The answer is no. But Joshua's a smart dude. His whole training team are smart guys. They are not looking past Joseph Parker. They know exactly what Joe can bring. You know, they've been looking at us for the last three years and we've been watching them. This fight was supposed to happen a long time ago before there was ever any belts at stake. You know, this fight was something, this fight has been inevitable. Both teams have looked at each other's styles. That They will not be underestimating Joseph Parker. You know, the, the, um, the boogies might be, but I can promise you Joshua's team are not. Does it go 12 rounds? Do you guys have a feeling that it will or it won't? Well, I'll tell you this. When you look at both guys, Joseph Parker has several one-punch clean knockouts where he's put guys out cold. Joshua, I don't know if Joshua's got a one-punch knockout. Joshua has to hit you with three, four, five punches. And admittedly, they're very, very heavy punches. But I can tell you this, in 24 professional fights, I've never seen anybody hit Joseph Parker with two punches in a row, let alone three, four, or five. Sure, he can get hit, you can hit him with one, but I've never seen Joshua knock anybody out with one punch. And Joe, does it go 12? If it goes 12, I know that my fitness can take me. You know, we train for 12 rounds, but like I said, anything can happen in the fight. I want to be prepared to take his, you know, the best 100 days on the floor, and hopefully he's prepared to take mine. But I think as heavyweights or as guys who really want it so bad, I think someone will get knocked out. How do you like the attention? <laughs> Has it been a pretty cool thing, like the, the attention? Coming into this fight, like how are you embracing that side? Yeah, I think you got to in boxing, you got to embrace everything. You know, embrace the training, embrace the pain, embrace all of this kind of stuff. So I think you just have to, uh, have to enjoy, you know. Have enjoy you enjoyed? Of, yeah, I enjoy yeah. every part of boxing and what it brings. Speaking of twelve rounds, are you afraid that if it goes twelve rounds for both of you guys, will the business of boxing take place? Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you what, we get asked this question all the time. Do you think you're going to get a fair go over there? We hope so. You know, in the contract, um, the, when we sat down with uh, Eddie Hearn, it was you know, neutral officials right across the board, judges and referee. But, you know, we had the same thing in place for the Huey Fury fight, and we get over there in the BBBOC, 
decided to take control of everything and they said this is our party, we'll say who the officials are. Now we're hoping that that doesn't happen this time. But you know, all I can say is you know, uh, Eddie Hearn and, and our promoter David Higgins both put a contract together that says neutral officials. And I think if we get neutral officials right across the board, I think we'll get a fair go. Joe? I'm asking the question, do you think you'll get a fair handshake if it goes 12 rounds? Um, and I, I sort of. No, I, I, no I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. And I was going to ask you, would that make you more anxious in the championship rounds? Like, damn, I, I'm in. This guy just put 100,000, 70,000, excuse me, 70,000 people in the seat. They want Anthony Joshua Wilder. It's an even fight. I don't know, but it feels like it. Do I got to give everything, or do you trust the judges? Well, hopefully, you know, the judges we have are, are neutral judges that we can trust. Um, and I trust in my team to be able to sort of um, get that sorted, you know. And, but I mean, if I focus on myself, focus on what I have to do, I'm just going to go out there and give it the best performance. And if I, you know, if I do dominate for 12 rounds, then everyone can see. And you know, then if they give it the other way, you know, it will cause a lot of uh, attention. Joseph, uh, when it is fight night, how much different is your temperament than what we see right now? You know, gentleman, soft-spoken guy. Do you, does it change that much? Are you more cold and clinical in there and thinking? What, what are you like on fight night? Fight night's the uh, same as this. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, smiles a lot more on fight night. Play music, you know, dance, tell sings jokes, and dances. Happy, happy. <laughs> We're, uh, I know for uh, a lot of fans on our side here that are going to be watching this, it's going to be the first time they're seeing you. Who were some of the people that inspired you uh, growing up in, in terms of boxing? Like, Who were some of your favorite boxers to watch? One of my favorite fighter was Lennox Lewis. Um, the height he had, the reach, and he used, you know, the, he used what he had to the best of his ability. But then also what he did after boxing, like retiring at the top. <coughs> They attempted to come back, but they didn't come back. You know, just finish at the top level. Mm -hmm. That's pretty, pretty cool to see. And how did you get into boxing? Uh, my dad's named after Jack Dempsey, and he couldn't box because he had a disability. So at a young age, loved the sport, had a passion for it, and slowly got myself and my brother into it. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that moment, the the first time you went into a gym? Oh, uh, maybe about nine years old. Yeah. How was it? Describe that. I was. Was it like love stinky. at first sight? It was, was stinky. stinky. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good gym then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was uh, just learning, you know, learning and just seeing it. It was, it was a big, it was like a, you know, as a young boy looking at the gym, like, damn, what is it? But then slowly when you grow older and you sort of see the gym, it's just uh, you know, it's a place where people work hard, but it was good. Did you uh, immediately like boxing? I, my dad held up his hand, unless at the age of, when I was age of three or four. I told him to start punching his hands and that's what I So just hooked from very, very Yeah, and he started watching tapes, mm -hmm. Mike Tyson, seeing all those knockouts, pretty impressive. Yeah.